Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, The Silver Fox. Now, uh, we're going to have a piece here where a leading businessman is basically saying what we have already touched on. Um, certainly when I've done the videos and then the comments, it seems that most of you um, completely understand the ramifications of raising taxes. It will drive inward investment away. It will drive those who can leave to leave the country. It will stop attracting people to come and work in the country. And it makes people change their behaviours to such an extent that it may even decrease the tax take. And this isn't surprising, given that you've got a woman with an IQ of 86 in charge of finances and the economy. And she doesn't understand that growing the economy is more important than raising taxes if you want to increase your tax take. It's a very, very bad position to find yourself in. But he is saying, and he's arguing, that now that they've got the flavour, got the little taste for tax rises, and that there's been two consecutive years of tax rises, it's likely to continue. There should be no reason why there won't be annual rises under the SNP now that they like it, now they know they can do it, and it will continue to destroy the economy. Let's have a look at what, see what he is saying and to see basically what we've all been saying and agreeing with. But it's nice to see other people um, can see it as well. We're not alone in our views. Here goes. So Scots could face SNP tax hikes every year, warns business chief, as its incompetence, waste and overspending won't stop. And we've been saying this for so long. It is a mixture of incompetence and stupidity. They have waste that is done for ideological reasons. They won't stop spending vast and ever increasing amounts of money on a project that they know they cannot achieve independence, but they still got to do it. And they overspend in every single budgeted area because they're too stupid to realise that what they're doing is impossible. But it's like anything. It's like, oh, let's build a road. Let's get a quote. It's a million. How much is it going to cost? Three million. Let's build a prison. How much? hundred million. How much is it actually going to cost? 400 million. Everything, every single thing it overspends because they have to put their nose in at every stage, change, interfere and push their agenda rather than saying, OK, go and build it for that price and standing well back. Can't help themselves. Micromanaging and micromanaging costs. Uh, Scots business chief Guy Stonehouse warned that while some high earning Scots may be happy to pay extra to live in Scotland, the SNP's inability to balance its books could mean tax hikes every year and likely will. She's got a little taste for it now. She's got that little nim 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 nim. Oh, yes, a little tax hike. That'd be nice. Yeah. Then we can spend a bit more on some rubbish that I've thought about. Vanity projects. Not on anything useful like hospitals or education. Oh, no, no. But my God, we can open up another foreign embassy. Staff it with our friends and families. Give them a nice salary in pleasant climates. How nice for us, everybody. And it's only the Scottish taxpayer paying. Hey ho, they can't put food on the table for their children. But you know, they can, they can afford this apparently. A business chief has warned that the Scottish government's hated tax hikes may be forced on the Scots every year as the SNP's incompetence, waste and overspending won't stop. Guy Stenhouse aired the stark warning as he blasted the SNP Greens administration for its endless list of failures. And it truly is endless because they're going to fail at everything they do. Everything so far has failed, but everything planned will also fail. And it won't just be a spectacular fail. It will be an expensive fail. They don't. They never fail on day one when they've spent £3.50. They fail on day 300 when they've spent a million and a half or £2 million. Pounds. Or more. Uh, for the second year running, the Nationalist Executive bumped up income tax for the highest earners in the country as it strived to fill a £1.5 billion budget black hole. And if they're telling you it's £1.5 billion, you know it's going to be much bigger. Uh, this massive gap between funding and spending was only exacerbated by a council tax freeze promise to boost SNP votes. It hasn't boosted the votes and it will destroy council services. Although the councils, as I've said, are under no legal obligation as yet to uh, to freeze the council tax and indeed non-NSP councils probably won't they may just push it through anyway and what's he going to do there's no legal recourse open to him they're not being funded they can put the council tax up oh and they're not being funded 
Finance Secretary Shona Robinson confirmed that the top rate of income tax paid by about 40,000 Scots would be increased by one percentage point, while a new tax ban was introduced for those earning 75,000 and above. Ministers were warned that this could damage the economy. Well, of course it will. Of course it will. Any time you increase tax, it automatically damages the economy as it stops talented people moving to the country and even makes entrepreneurs move away to England, where they'll be taxed much less. And wait till March, because it's likely there'll be a reduction either in the tax rate uh, or, or the, uh, the, the, the allowances, and that will be um, that will be fixed. Now, I've had comments in there before, in, in, um, in the comments section when I mentioned this before, saying that, oh, the, uh, the, the allowances are set, they, they, they're set by England, but they apply everywhere. It's only the tax rates that's not strictly true because for example um, the introduction of the tax rate at 75,000 for example is um, a ta is the is an allowance so your basic basic tax allowance at the bottom may change and maybe the change in Scotland is reflected but beyond that it's entirely up to the Scottish um, government which is why they've got what's called fiscal lagging so they will not raise the allowances at each tax band in line with inflation or anything, they may not like raise them at all. And that way they encompass more people into each ever, you know, higher tax band as time goes on. Um, it's, a, it's a shady, uh, low down kind of game that they use to try and increase taxation without actually saying, look, this is what we're doing. Um, but that's what they are doing. It's very shady, very sleek it. Uh, anyway, they confuse, uh, sorry, uh, Guy Stenhouse is a member of the Scottish Business UK campaign, confirmed that he was in the category who was happy to pay the premium to live in Scotland, but that the direction of travel the SNP in going, is going should be concerning for everyone, he says. He wrote in the Herald, the SNP have proved to be incompetent in government with schools, health, education, roads, rail, ferries. The list of failures, he says, is endless. And now they're taxing supermarkets, which means your food will get more expensive because the supermarkets are going to go, right, we've got to pay that, fine. And we'll just put it onto the price of everything. And they'll put a penny across the board. You go to the shops and it's already expensive now. Food inflation now is horrendous. All of a sudden, bang, it's even more. It's no wonder people will be moving to England or not investing in Scotland. You know, doing whatever they want. People, high paid people, high, you know, the, the people you need, the professionals just won't go. Why shouldn't they? Why would you? Uh, he says they confuse investment with spending and they do so an, with an excess of the latter. They blame Westminster, but we've all now worked out that that is not true. Scotland unequivocally benefits from being part of the UK. He says the Scottish government, despite a more generous funding than the rest of the UK, cannot make the sums add up. They would like to borrow in the bond markets and thank God they cannot. The First Minister's recent claim that we would all be thousands of pounds better off if we separate from the UK, he says, is laughable. We've covered that and it's beyond laughable. It is humiliatingly stupid of him if he thinks that's in any way true. Uh, he says, this is either stupid or dishonest and I can't work out which. Oh, it's undoubtedly both, they think. Uh, and there's the guy staying else. Uh, taxpayers, he says, see incompetence, ever-increasing spending, an unwillingness to embrace new ideas to drive efficiency, a lack of understanding of business and a deficit that will only grow. He points out the SNP executive avoids making hard choices when it comes to dealing with strikes, pushing forward ferries from Ferguson Marine and not reforming the NHS. Oh yeah, I mean, we want to go on strike. Oh, just have your money. They don't even enter in negotiations because negotiations are hard. And the trouble is, who are you sending in? Okay, the doctor's gone on strike. You've got to send in Matheson. Matheson, a man who is so untrustworthy, a man whose whose word is worthless, a proven liar, a proven thief, a proven, well, I can't say proven, but, you know, suspected of having the most awful stuff on his iPad. Who's going to go? He's got to go into a meeting. These, these unions will run all over him. OK, so okay, it's money. Let's send in Shona. Shona? She's got the IQ of a duck. And they're going to expect her to go in and make high, complex, you know, decisions. Again, the unions will be all over it. So what do they do? They say, we won't negotiate. We'll just pay the unions. How much do they want? Oh, I don't know. 15%? Pay them. 
Why haven't we got the money left? Well, we paid the unions 15%. This is what happens. Morons, isn't it? It says the SNP government doesn't cut the cost of public sector as it knows it should, but bails itself out in the short term by dragging more money out of taxpayers. And the real problem is that the SNP government's incompetence, waste and overspending will not stop. What happens next year when the sums don't add up again? Or the year after that, where does the top rate stop? 55%? 75%? Who knows? But losing half of each additional pound you earn already stretches the goodwill of those taxpayers who contribute the most to the very limit. It's 70p in the pound. For, you know, if once you hit £75,000, you're losing 70 pence in the pound in tax and national insurance. Why would you put the hours in? Uh, anyway, Hamza Yousaf has said that he will refuse to apologise for a progressive tax system as he pointed out freebies that the taxpayers get in Scotland, including free prescriptions for millionaires, free tuition for millionaires and his much-touted Scottish child payment for millionaires. And there we go. I mean, everyone gets them, but, you know, why? Why? Imagine having um, the people who don't have the money getting free prescriptions, but everyone else paying for them. How much would that raise? Just saying. But of course, he can't do that. And he says he won't apologise. Not apologising for policy is sheer hubris. Coming up. Everyone better start getting used to paying a lot more tax. And of course, this year's council tax freeze, if it goes through, won't help next year. They've been so underfunded and starved this year that when they put them up next year, it'll be twice as much. You could be looking at 20% increases. And that'll be just in time for the, uh, the Holyrood elections. The man truly has no idea about political nous, does he? What an arse. And of course, he's going to destroy the economy. He's going to drive people out. There'll be no growth. And Scotland will be scorched earth as they leave office. But that, of course, is all part of the plan. They know they're done. They've already salted away the millions and the billions. And they'll all be there on the last day, getting the last Chinook out of Vietnam, won't it? Or, the, uh, or getting onto the, the big private jets and sodding off to those countries that don't have um, extradition treaties to live sitting on the beach, drinking their pina coladas and earning 8%. Anyway, I shall stop there. Thank you very much for watching. Do please hit the subscribe button. It massively helps. Leave a like, leave a comment, please share the video. Until next time, stay safe, stay well, and I'll speak to you later. Bye.